we're going to win. I think we're going to win an election the likes of which nobody's ever seen before. I don't think anything's going to stop it. Nothing's going to stop it. Because people see what's happened to our country. Welcome back to America Decides. That was former President Trump remaining confident about his chances in 2024. A new CBS News poll is giving us an idea of what a potential rematch between him and President Biden could look like. Our poll shows Trump holding a one-point lead over the president among likely voters. These results are within the margin of error. Anthony Salvanto and Bo Erickson join us now. Anthony is CBS News' executive director of elections and surveys, and Bo is a CBS News White House reporter. Anthony, I want to start with you. Walk us through some of your key findings. Oh, hey, Nicole. Look, for starters, it's the economy driving a lot of that. You see people who say that they're not financially as well off as they were before the pandemic, and I think that's the important dividing line for people well, they're going more for Donald Trump. So that's number one. But I want to put the whole race in context here for people. It's not necessarily a race that people suggest they want, they want to see. Um, we asked, how would a rematch like this make you feel? And nearly two-thirds says it would make them feel like the political system was broken. Um, and then another third actually come down a little bit on primary voters that we've been following and polling in other areas and that they're out of touch. So that sort of sets the context. It's very early, but that's where people start, Nicole. Yeah, well, I really want to drill down on that graphic because what jumped out at me are the 8%, 8 <laughs> single digits, who think that either President Biden or the former president are the best candidates. I mean, what does that say about the state of the 2024 race? Um, what it tells you is people say there is a lot at stake. It's the flip side of you know, saying that the system is broken if, in their minds, it produces these candidates. But the other thing I would add is, as much as they think democracy is at stake, the rule of law is at stake, they also think it, that's only going to be safe. Democracy is only going to be safe if their guy wins, Nicole. And, Bo, you know, I know you talked to some Democratic voters in Pennsylvania about the president heading into 2024. What was the sentiment on the ground? Well, this is a really key area of southeastern Pennsylvania. It's where President Biden has to run up the score again with a lot of Democratic voters in order to be able to win the state again in 2024, maybe against former President Trump, if that is that rematch happening. And what I heard a lot talking to these Democratic voters is that they have some concerns about President Biden's age. He's 80 years old and if he's tough enough. So we can actually listen to how they describe some of these concerns. I think he's too old to be president right now. I think he could do better. I think he's trying, but he's not, he's, he's not strong enough. Like, he needs to put his foot down a little bit more. I want there to be a Democrat that is competent for all four years. And so talking to these voters, when you hear them talk about age, when you talk a little bit more about them, it kind of seems like age is like a proxy for health. They're concerned about the president's health and his future health. And it should be noted that the White House doctor has given Biden a clean bill of health. He calls him a healthy, vigorous 80-year-old. But some of these concerns that they were saying, other people said that the president seemed feeble. Another Democrat said, like, President Biden could use a monster energy drink. So we'll see, maybe he'll start drinking those. Uh, but one solution that they said is that they need to see more of President Biden out to kind of prove some of his skeptics wrong if they do have those concerns. And Anthony, very briefly, I mean, I know the poll uh, that you conducted also touches a bit on the age issue. It also uh, touches on uh, Democrats' feelings uh, with respect to defending democracy. What else did you find? Well, let me pick up on that word you heard there, tough, right? Now, Joe Biden gets described as calm, predictable, all things that helped him in 2020, but tough is not very high on this list. What does that mean for Democrats, since we're talking about them in particular, very briefly? Well, what I want to show you is that Democrats think that not only will democracy be in danger if Biden doesn't win, but that four in ten of them think he's not being tough enough towards Republicans. Those two things connect, right? If they see a danger and they want someone who they perceive is tougher, then that's not meeting their, what they want in a president at the moment. Maybe that stirs a little bit of concern, Nicole.
Yeah, and uh, speaking of qualities uh, with respect to the various candidates, there also has been a lot of talk, Bo, about what role a Vice President Harris could potentially play on the campaign. Let's play some more of what voters told you about that in Pennsylvania, and we'll get your reaction on the other side. She's too quiet. She's not, you know, she's not standing like she should stand. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like she has a lot more in her that we're not hearing. Um, I feel like she's being silent or she's kind of, you know, worried about, you know, what she can say and what she cannot say. I really thought that she would have a more prominent role and we would see more of her, especially for um, the young girls in school uh, as a role model. It's really not necessary to always be in the headlines. You know, you still can get a lot of work done behind the scenes, you know, so I don't worry that we don't hear a lot from our VP. And of course, the administration and the campaign continues to defend uh, the vice president's uh, role. But what else did you hear from voters on the trail? So these voters may be to be expected. These are Democrats. So they are actually supportive of Vice President Harris. And they noted that vice presidents don't usually have center stage when it comes to these reelection campaigns. But that word that we heard from the first woman there, silence, that is a word that several people brought, brought up to me. And I thought that was really interesting and maybe a tell for maybe a future problem for the campaign. But it, did most of the voters you talked to, I mean, did they feel that she still is the best running mate for the president? Yes, they did. They, they really still wanted her on, on the ticket here, but they want to hear more from her and they want her to really latch on to some of these big ticket issues. All right. Well, Bo Erickson, thanks so much for your coverage on the trail.